if we had had confidence that the president clearly did not commit a crime, we would have said so. They could be the 16 words that change everything after special counsel Robert Mueller pointedly declined to exonerate President Donald Trump on the issue of obstruction of justice. His words reigniting the debate among Democrats over whether Trump should be impeached. How is there still a debate among the Democrats on whether Trump should be impeached or not? Democrats are such cowards, dude. They are absolute cowards for not continuing the wheel this Mueller investigation like a goddamn flaming sword and pushing on every other openly awful thing that Trump has done. I said this before and I will repeat it. Stop behaving like a bunch of feckless cowards. You don't bring an indictment or you don't bring an impeachment unless you have all of the facts, the strongest possible case uh, so that the, um, uh, the president is held accountable one way or another. What more do you need? Trump is insanely corrupt. Everyone already knows this. He obstructed justice openly. He very likely violated campaign finance laws to pay off his porn star mistress. I mean, hooking up with Stormy is not my concern, but the misuse of funds, a uh, misuse of campaign funds absolutely is. And then Trump and his family commit crimes and violate laws almost weekly. His administration is openly showing disdain for the checks and balances on executive authority. And now they're even refusing to show up to investigations launched by congressional committees. Meanwhile, the New York Times is writing about whether Hope Hicks is too hot to respond to subpoenas. Nice, dude. Nice. What exactly are the Democrats looking for? What are they waiting for, really? But I guess this is exactly like that time Obama refused to investigate the Bush administration for war crimes. Remember that? Will you appoint a special prosecutor, ideally Patrick Fitzgerald, to independently investigate the gravest crimes of the Bush administration, including torture and warrantless wiretapping? Um, we're still evaluating how we are going to uh, approach the whole issue of uh, interrogations, detentions, uh, and so forth. Uh, and obviously we're going to be looking at past practices. Uh, and uh, I don't believe that anybody is above the law. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I also have a belief that we need to look forward. This wasn't just politically an unsound move, this was also immoral. Weaponizing the Mueller investigation, on the other hand, isn't about preserving democracy or whatever. I don't care about maintaining the false notion that we have a democratic process and we're not an oligarchy. We absolutely are an oligarchy. There is probably no democracy, but it's absolutely pathetic to not pursue this from a political standpoint. I mean, this is exactly what the Republicans did with Benghazi. Uh, we will not waver in our commitment to see that justice is done for this terrible act in Benghazi. Benghazi. Four murdered Americans in Benghazi. We're right there in Benghazi. On the Benghazi uh, probes about Benghazi. Yeah. The Benghazi committee. We wouldn't have had your Benghazi situation. There were eight official investigations into Benghazi in the aftermath of an embassy attack that led to the death of four Americans in Libya. The Benghazi investigations found no conspiracy of a cover-up or any wrongdoing by the administration, but this of course didn't stop Fox News from airing 1,098 evening segments in the first 20 months after the attacks, linking it to Hillary running for president and comparing it to Watergate and Iran-Contra. Republicans in Congress spent more time investigating Benghazi than they did investigating 9-11 or Watergate and the JFK assassination combined. But why? Well, let's ask Representative Kevin McCarthy. Everybody thought Hillary Clinton was unbeatable, right? But we put together a Benghazi special committee, a select committee. What are her numbers today? If you think that Republicans would ever give up an opportunity to unleash hell on their political opponents, you have to be living in a fantasy land. But then again, it's also insanely frustrating that Democrats are shocked about Mitch McConnell openly admitting that Republicans would 100% fill a SCOTUS seat in an election year. For example, if like Ruth Bader Ginsburg croaked in 2020. I do declare, how dare Mitch McConnell fill a Supreme Court vacancy after forcing the Democrats' hands not to do so. Wake up, everybody. We are being led by babies. The Democratic Party is full of just absolute babies. I'm Hassan Piker. If you like this video, please share it with your friends. And if you disagree with me, tell me why in the comments below. And this has been The Breakdown. If you like this video, great. Never miss another breakdown video by hitting the subscribe button below and also ring the bell to get notified whenever we publish a new one. Perfect.